In this video, I'm going to show you two steps to do more natural looking sky edits in Lightroom Classic. Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. In today's Lightroom Quick Tip video, we're going to talk about how to edit skies. I am following a two-step process to give me more natural looking skies in Lightroom Classic. Now, this image, this beautiful reflection taken at Aki Lake, right in Juneau, Alaska, has a very nice sky and a very nice reflection. I already did my global edits to this image and I also created a mask to edit the trees and make the trees glow a little bit more. But I wanted to edit the sky, so I'm going to show you another version this one has my sky edit added and i wanted to have a little more drama on the sky but i wanted the sky and the reflection to be natural again this is without the sky edit and this is with the sky edit so how do i get there well let's start with the image that doesn't have any sky edits and as you well know lightroom some time ago added a sky selection mask and that one works very well most of the time so we go and select masks and you'll see i already have the mask for the trees i'm going to create a new mask and in this first step i'm going to select the sky and it's going to process the image and it did a very good sky selection now it selected some of the clouds as well but let's not worry about that now what do i want to do to this sky for this specific image well i'm going to darken it a bit I'm going to add some clarity because that brings additional contrast. I'm going to add the haze and that brings even more contrast and a lot of drama to the sky. Now, one of the side effects of using this the haze is that it ends up saturating the sky a little bit too much. So I'm going to reduce saturation a bit. Here is no edits on the sky and here is the sky edit. And it looks so much better. Now, the problem I have with the results of this first step is that when we selected the sky, it did at 100% selection of the sky from top to bottom. So the edits that we did are applied the same all across the sky. And most times on natural skies, that's not the case. The high section of the sky may be darker and the lower portion of the sky may be a little bit lower. So this is where my second step comes in, and that's to use the intersect function. I want to intersect the original mask that we just created with a graduated filter and using the fading effect of the filter to affect how much of the edits get applied to the sky. To do that, we go to the mask that we created and we see the word sky. I have two options. I can click on the three dots and it gives me the option to intersect the mask with, and I can select the linear gradient. Even faster for me is to use the Alt key, and using the Alt key, the Add and Subtract portion get replaced with Intersect. So if I let go, I have Add and Subtract. If I press Alt, it's Intersect. So I click on Intersect, I'm gonna do the linear gradient, and I'm gonna click and drag. If you hold the Shift key, it stays straight, and I'm gonna come you know, to the bottom. On the linear gradient, as you know, we have three lines. Above the top line, we have 100% of the mask. From the top line to the middle, we have a graduated effect from 100% to 50%. From the middle to the bottom line, goes from 50 to zero. And below the bottom line is a 0%. And we can adjust the position and we can adjust the width or the distance between the different lines to get the effect that we want. So basically on this one, I'm gonna have 100% of the effect on the top, and it's gonna go from 100% fading to zero here on the mountains. And don't worry about passing because we're intersecting with the sky mask. So we look at the results now. Does the sky without edits? And this is the sky with the new intersected mask. If I remove the linear gradient, you can see how the portion right by the mountains got really dark. 
If I add the gradient, it lightens up the bottom. So the overall effect is a lot more natural. In summary, two steps. Select sky, do your edits. Step two, intersect it with a graduated filter. Now, in this specific image, we have a reflection. I could do a graduated filter from the bottom towards the middle of the photo, and that will probably give me a good enough results. But can we use the sky selection on a reflection? And the answer is sometimes. And to do that, what we have to do is we go under photo. I'm going to select flip vertical. And basically, I flip the image. And now the reflection is on top. So if I add a new mask, I'm going to create mask. And I'm going to select sky. I full Lightroom into thinking that the reflection was the sky. And now I can basically repeat the steps. I'm going to reduce the exposure just a bit. So I'm going to reduce texture and clarity. And now I'm going to do my second step. I'm going to intersect it with a linear gradient. Holding the shift key. It's going to hold it straight. I let go. And now I have the reflection edited. To go back to the image, the right side up. I go to photo and I flip it vertical again. So now I had done a sky selection both on the top and then by full in Lightroom, I do it on the bottom. And that doesn't necessarily work all the time, but you'll be surprised how many times we can use this trick to do edits on your sky reflections. Well, amigos, that's all for this quick tip. I hope you enjoyed this video. I leave you here with this video I published recently on an updated review of Topaz Photo AI version 1.1.0. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please send me your comments. I answer every single comment. Give me a thumbs up to help me grow the channel, and I'll see you next time.